everyone it is danny and welcome to this updated video i trust and hope that you guys are doing really fantastic and we're going to be taking a look at our active hurricane out there which is nigel as well as these two areas which are marked additionally we'll talk about what is currently happening across the caribbean and surrounding areas so let's go ahead and move on to this surface chart here so there we can see that tropical wave two tropical waves out there one is more recent and we've got that one closer to northern south america so if this is going to be sustaining enough activity then it could help to increase the instability across parts of northern south america and even the caribbean and that would allow for some more rainfall activity to take place there we have Hurricane Nigel up there and there is that frontal system which extends from parts of the U.S. into the Gulf and back up and uh, along the tail end of it we could see some of that leftover activity trying to form into a subtropical cyclone not a tropical cyclone so we'll go on to that system later in this video but for the most part we've got these two tropical waves out there we've got Nigel what is left of Margo and let's head on to the current satellite imagery so here we have it there we can see that frontal system a bit of thunderstorm activity across parts of the gulf and florida and uh we even see some thunderstorms in sections of the caribbean and northern south america there is nigel pretty prominent on this satellite imagery and also all that moisture in the main development region some of which is in association with the tropical wave closer to north america uh, northern south america rather and so let's zoom into the area so firstly we are heading to northern south america and there we can see some thunderstorm activity across sections of colombia venezuela and the Guyanas as well not for everywhere but some areas are experiencing that inclement weather this evening also just offshore of Panama lots of activity there and in the region Costa Rica and then as we head further up north headed to the general Caribbean region there we can also see that across some areas such as Jamaica Cuba Hispaniola Puerto Rico even in parts of the lesser Antilles near Guadeloupe earlier and also Martinique there was some thunderstorm activity and even as we look to the Turks and Caicos Islands and sections of the Bahamas but for most of us it has been a pretty hot day especially throughout the morning hours and so now we want to go ahead and move on to nigel so here we can see the hurricane on the visible satellite imagery it's getting darker in those more recent frames because the nighttime hours are approaching and this is visible satellite imagery so uh, there we can see it no eye is there as yet and it is likely battling a bit of dry air as well as some shear which has likely resulted in it uh, maintaining intensity and not actually strengthening and the NHG has been on and off about it actually becoming a major hurricane. So at this point, uh, I really think that it's going to try to hold on to maybe Cat 1, potentially up to Cat 2 status. Here we are looking at the cone of uncertainty and we can see that it is expected to pass well to the east of Bermuda. So nothing is changing in terms of that and there is pretty good model consensus on that as well. So it is likely to remain a hurricane for the next couple of days as we head to the latter part of this week. It will likely make its way uh, further up into in latitude headed toward cooler water waters where it will become post-tropical and eventually dissipates maybe by this weekend going into early next week but for now it is sustaining winds of 80, uh, 80 miles per hour and moving up to the northwest at 12 miles per hour here we can even see the possibilities or probabilities of tropical storm force winds all remain in offshore of everywhere bermuda the azores so it is not an issue but will kick up the surf as i've mentioned in this morning's update and so now let's go ahead and quickly move on to our two areas to watch for some development as we head into later this week. So we're kickstarting with our more recently marked area. Here you can see it off the southeastern U.S. coast. So as I showed you guys earlier, the remnants of a front could try to form into something. So it is not going to be tropical in nature and will likely not be something strong either, not a hurricane. The most it'll try to become is maybe a subtropical depression or a subtropical tropical storm but that can only happen if that low pressure area remains offshore off the southeastern coast of the u.s so if it remains inland or loiters in and out then it is likely that we won't see much become of it and now we're heading on to our next disturbance there we can see the formation chance remains constant at 70 percent so that wave coming as we head later into the week heading to around the midweek and uh with a weakened high pressure system out there then there is a 
pretty good probability that we could see the system make its curve up as we've seen many systems do this hurricane season. However, if there is a stronger high, then we would see more of a westward track and that is when it could make its way to the Caribbean or very close to the Caribbean before getting the opportunity to make that curve up to the north. And let's now go ahead and take a look at some model data. So we're going to be taking a look at the ensemble tracks from both GFS and Euro uh, and we're going out to 10 days. Beginning with the Euro, there we can see pretty good consensus on Nigel by the way and there we see a couple of members picking up on something trying to become of that future low pressure area of the southeastern US and uh, there we can see these members expecting that we could see something form out there even multiple systems matter of fact so we can see that for the most part they want to keep whatever develops outside the Caribbean and then as we head to the GFS model we can see that there is some more members agreeing that hey we could see something actually enter and be a problem for northeastern islands maybe a saving grace or a problem because if it is something on the weaker side then the rainfall would be very much appreciated because it has been very dry there are persistent drought conditions for many areas so that rainfall would do the area some good but too much of anything is not good because there could be flooding and overall, the GFS has been backing off on development taking place with the expected wave to come off the African, uh, the African coast. But uh, with those tropical waves being weak and making their way to the Caribbean, as I said earlier, with enough activity, that could result in some increased rainfall. And that is very much needed right now. So we'll definitely have to wait and see what is up ahead. And I'm here to keep you guys posted. So that is basically it for this update. I trust and hope you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, Please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to be with us.